All right, good afternoon. My name is Jason Lang. I'm the Bryan District Utility Coordinator. We have two tracking reports that we use in our district. One that tracks all of the projects we have that require UC work, and then we have an individual correspondence report that tracks individual progress on that particular project. This is a timeline that we've kind of developed over the last three years, and it's been working well for us. Uh, I won't go over all of it, but the main points are is to get the notification out as early as possible. Um, here you can see we're, our typical project, we start a year out, sending out notification. We send those out to all of the utilities, the reimbursables and non-reimbursables. Um, around the 30% design phase, utilities start providing us, or should have already provided us, their system maps, their as-builts, any of the details of their facilities that they would like us to incorporate in our plans and to look out for. By the 60% design phase, we should be wrapping up our own uh, conflict assessment and the utilities should be wrapping up theirs at that point. Um, we kind of share in this task because they know their facilities better than we ever would and we know the utility manual better than they ever would. Um, There's always things we can't avoid. Uh, the delays are sometimes ine inevitable, but uh, a few of the things that we've worked on to, to try to cut those down are to work with your advanced planning engineers and your design engineers. At the first hint of a project, we try to get something out, whether it's just a simple cover page and area map out to them, it at least is a shot across the bow so we can start that conversation and get working on what's ahead. It goes without saying, any utility you avoid is one less that can cause you a delay during construction. Um, so we really do work with them to avoid and mitigate those conflicts. It also helps having one point of contact uh, for the reimbursable and non-reimbursable utilities. When you're working with them on a daily basis like that, you really can cur cultivate relationships and start working together towards something as opposed to always feeling like you're on the other side of the fence from them. And then, of course, the Sioux contracts on some of our more complex projects, good data in is always good data out. Um, it gets us ahead of the game when construction rolls around. We've probably all seen this picture or one like it. We sometimes forget as utility coordinators that one of our most important aspects is to discover things in the design phase and not the construction phase. And as Sheila said, here at TxDOT, safety is a very important aspect of it and lives depend on it. And it's not just the folks in the field working. It could be innocent passerbys or anything like that. Uh, when a whole neighborhood has to get evacuated due to a gas leak or something like that, it's, it's more than just our tech stop family that gets affected. With that, is there any questions for me or any of the other panel? I did that good of a job. Yes, sir. Uh, this is uh, actually, I would like to say something to uh, some of what you said, is that when you talk to contractors, in many cases, you have to deal with utility conflicts, but they are the first ones to tell you that they would rather not deal with utility conflicts, but the best time to deal with utility conflicts is when design or even earlier. Yes, sir. The last thing you want to do is, is handle utility conflicts. So the number of things to tell where the money is. Giving them early notification helps with that budgeting. And also, now you're starting to run into material shortages. Um, if anyone was relocating uh, communications when the tsunami hit, uh, I believe that was last year, cable was hard to get for some of them, fiber optic cable. Standing on that niche, we ran into a lot of salsa like the long haul fibers, they will not do any work for the quarter. So if you're 
You're exactly right, and then the splicers too. It seems like they're in very short demand on those fiber optic type relocations. Yes, sir. Uh, I noticed that you were talking about one contact reimbursable and non reimbursable. Uh, do you know how many of those are in your districts? How long have y'all been doing that in your district? And just expound a little bit if you could, how that decision was made. It was a decision based really out of necessity. Um, we've been doing that for about three years, and it wasn't easy to certain, suddenly just start that. But I came into the position, there was a slight backlog because the person who had left um, before me had moved on about four months. So I came into that position, and really the designers we're all trying to talk to them um, separately. And it just made sense to start working with one point of contact. And it's a lot to get going at the beginning, but every day you do it, things get a little bit easier. You start to build those relationships, the utilities, they really respond well with it. Um, now the only time you have to mess with restarting that working relationship is when someone retires. <laughs> so it, it, it's hard to start with, it really is, but once you get it going, it, it kind of manages itself. One thing I, I wanted to say, um, one thing I wanted to say is in the Rideway Division, under the direction of Mr. John Campbell, he's asked Jesse Cooper and the utility team to start looking at our utility agreement packages and, and looking at new ways to maybe have it worded so we can start the early identification and coordination of utilities a lot earlier in our process. It seems like historically we always think about utilities right after right away is acquired. So what we're trying to do is really bring it in like Edgar and Gary talked about, the importance of the minute we know there's a project, we we'll start looking at those utilities. Maybe there's other district offices that can save $2.5 million just by identifying and avoiding the utility adjustment. So that is something that uh, Jesse Cooper and his team are working on. They are looking at revising the utility agreement packages, their verbiage on them, to give us a little bit more opportunity to coordinate with the utilities and maybe help them be more open-minded and feel more comfortable to work with us earlier. Just to build on that too, Sheila, we've also opened up our release process to make it easier to start those activities a lot earlier on, even with our acquisition in terms of appraisal and